It's early May in Oklahoma and many people's thoughts turn to caring for their lawn. Whether you've got a cool season grass like tall fescue or a warm season grass like Bermuda grass, crabgrass can be a frequent problem in both of these types of lawns. Here we'd like to show you some crabgrass that's germinated and will soon become a problem for us. One thing that I'd like to emphasize in early May is that if one's serious about getting crabgrass post-emergent control, that is control the plant after it's emerged, now is really the time to act. Unfortunately, in many years, folks will call the extension service members in the middle of summer and the plant is already several feet across and there's very little that can be done at that time. So if one is wanting to take action against this uh, voracious summer annual weed, now's the time to do it. Here we see crabgrass at just the uh, first tiller stage. Uh, there's a daughter tiller coming off the main plant. But as we look at this area of thin turf, we can also see crabgrass at just the two leaf stage or even at the one leaf stage. So the point being that crabgrass continues to germinate throughout the warm period of the summer. Frequently you'll hear people saying, oh, it's too late to put down a pre-emergent herbicide. Throughout most of Oklahoma's growing season, nothing could be further from the truth because once the crabgrass is germinated, at least the first part of the population, it grows and covers over an area. So if you want to control the existing plants, you use a post-emergent crabgrass killer. However, once the crabgrass that it had germinated is killed out, there's still more seed in the soil. So we do need that pre-emergent herbicide in place. Thus, if you've missed the optimum timing for the first application of what we call the split program, you can still get some measure of success for later germinating crabgrass. So in early May, consider doing a post-emergent crabgrass application to kill out the existing plants that have emerged, and then also do a pre-emergent uh, application to guard against additional crabgrass aris arising from seed. Now the consumer ha has a couple different products that can be used for post-emergent control. One is amazoquin, uh, the active ingredient in image, and then also quinclorac, the active ingredient in a product such as Drive or in some of the major box store three-way mixes of both post-emergent broadleaf and also post-emergent grass herbicides. Now with any of these, the addition of a non-ionic surfactant can help in post-emergent control. When we say non-ionic surfactant, that's a specialty type of surfactant that usually can be bought from a chemical company distributor, but you typically will not find it in the box store. A non-ionic surfactant is not the same as dishwashing liquid. In fact, dishwashing liquid sometimes will inactivate the active ingredients in a post-emergent herbicide. So if you don't have a non-ionic surfactant, it's oftentimes better to even skip the soap addition. So think about now is the time in early May to do post-emergent crabgrass control and also have that second application, or maybe in your case, even the first application of pre-emergent for successful crabgrass control in the lawn. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.